So we're here at the example table, and in this video we're going to be talking about the Taylor series for f of x equals e to the x. So let's first remind ourselves of two definitions. The nth degree Taylor polynomial of f at a is this expression. It's a truncated Taylor series, so we're adding up the terms from x minus a equals zero to x minus a to the zero all the way up to the x minus a to the nth terms. The remainder is r sub n of x, and it's f of x minus t sub n of x, minus the nth Taylor polynomial. So, we already have a Taylor series for this function. What we really want to show is that this function equals its Taylor series. And to do so, we're going to show that this remainder goes to zero as n goes to infinity. So that means that this difference goes to zero. In other words, the infinite sum of these t sub n's equals f of x. To do so, we're, we're going to use Taylor's inequality, which says that if the absolute value of the n plus first derivative of f is less than or equal to m on some, uh, when x is no farther from a than some number k, then the absolute value of r sub n of x is bounded by this, this expression, m over n plus 1 factorial times the absolute value of x minus a to the n plus 1, again, whenever x is no farther from a than k. So we're going to use this inequality to show that e to the x equals its Taylor series. So we know that the Taylor series of e to the x centered at 0 is the sum from n equals 0 to infinity x to the n over n factorial. So what we want to show is that e to the x, in fact, equals this series. So let's let k be any number greater than 0. And let's take a look at the absolute value of the n plus first derivative. Well, the n plus first derivative of e to the x is just e to the x. So this is the absolute value of e to the x, which actually just equals e to the x. And this is certainly less than or equal to e to the k when the absolute value of x is less than or equal to k. So this e to the k is going to play the role of m in, Taylor, in uh, the Taylor inequality. Notice also that this doesn't depend on n. e to the k is an upper bound for every value of n. So we have the absolute value of r sub n of x by Taylor's inequality bounded above by e to the k over n plus 1 factorial times x minus a to the n plus 1. So 0 is going to be less than or equal to the limit as n goes to infinity of the absolute value of the r sub n of x terms. And this is less than or equal to the limit as n goes to infinity of this expression, e to the k over n plus 1 factorial times the absolute value of x minus a to the n plus 1. And this limit is 0. This is for all values of x within the appropriate range. So the limit as n approaches infinity of r sub n of x equals 0, which means that the, Taylor poly, that the nth Taylor polynomials, they are, they are approaching the value e to the x. So e to the x, in fact, equals its Taylor series, the sum from n equals 0 to infinity, x to the n over n factorial. 